Hi, today I'm going to be working with the Celebrate Today collection by Close to My Heart and I'm going to create a single page layout with one photo. So this um, story or this uh, layout is about a trip that we went um, for over sort of about 45 minutes to an hour's drive over to Wanaka where we visited the lavender farm and they had a couple of old tractors there that uh, my daughters climbed on and posed for some photos which was cool. Um, I was up late last night scrapbooking and so I put on these oils on the diffuser just as a bit of a creativity jolt. Um, I was creating with friends and which was pretty cool. Uh, but just to get me inspired again rather than sleepy I put those oils on the diffuser so I'm choosing um, some papers here that I'm going to use I've already decided that I want the um, sort of that watercolor paint brushed effect paper with some splatters on it um, I toyed with trimming down my photo but I decided I would trim the cardstock to back the photo first so just by trimming um, the 12 by 12 piece in half so the six inches and then three four inch bits down each side the photo that I have printed and trimmed on the selfie fits perfectly with a bit of a mat or a bit of a border around it to give it some depth and dimension so um, that's just a bit of a technique to save some paper if you want so sometimes you can actually trim the photo down rather than trimming uh, the cardstock to match. So I'm just playing with ideas and what I want in the layers behind this photo. I seem to have um, gone back to lots of layers behind each picture and it's about choosing the colours that lift the photo. So before you saw that floral one that I'd put on it didn't, um, when it was straight behind the photo it didn't help much and the same with this um, vellum sheet that came with the collection here it just softens these flowers a little bit uh, it dulls them with that semi-opaque nature of the vellum so I really liked those spots but I found another way to use them a little bit later on so I'm tucking aside those pieces that I've decided not to use in my photo layers and now I'm going to play around um, with where I want the photo to sit with the background. Um, so these little embellishment pieces here that I'm pulling out, they came as part of the scrapbooking kit. Um, if you've watched any of my other videos, you probably know I'm not very good at doing uh, exactly what I'm told or following the instructions. So I like to use these uh, however I see fit in whatever way I want. So I've actually taken out some of the cloud pieces from the center and I'm going to kind of treat these little clouds from that is from the kit as a cut file. So I'm just backing these uh, little clouds and I'm going to show two different ways of doing it. So here with the pattern paper I've shown one where I've just cut around the shape and then I'm going to glue it on. So I made sure it was uh, a little bit wider than what it needs to be so it will stick to the frame of the cloud. The next uh, Yep, so I'm just working out where I'm going to put that. And the next one I'm going to do, I was going to do it the same way and I started doing that and I thought, no, I'll show you another way to do the backing, um, which was, or which is, I'm just catching up here. I've got this um, recorded on fast, slightly faster, but just as I talk through it. So what I was, what I then decided to do is I'll actually glue the frame or the outline and stick it down and then I will trim it. So but before I can trim it, I need to let that glue dry properly because I don't want my scissors all sticky and gluey. But these we, um, close to my heart, scissors are like the best thing for fussy cutting. Uh, a friend of mine used, borrowed mine and ended up needing some because she does a lot of fussy cutting when she backs her cut files. So just playing around with the positions of things. Uh, there's some more die cuts that were, came with the scrapbooking collection. I've put them behind. Plus I got the pocket journaling cards um, that I decided I wanted to use or that fitted nicely with this page. So playing around with different placement. I decided to go for the orange remembering um, colour complementary theory and things where orange and purple uh, were I think they're the part of the triadic or dyadic color 
combinations if you want to look that up or find any of the color theory out go for it but it just kind of worked uh, and that's where I swapped over those two flowers down the bottom as well so that it gave the orange on that opposite side so it was sort of adding a balance so another die cut from the uh, collection is just this banner I'm going to trim that down but in the meantime I'm just going to sit that there I'm not going to use that one so it's ready for cutting so I just kind of tilt the paper or the vellum a little bit and so that the scissors can sort of get under that frame because you don't want any of the outline peeking out and I do have to go back over some bits to make sure that that's the case. So trimming around those, working out where it's going to go and I decide I want it overlapping the photo a little bit because it's got that almost see-through um, nature I think it works quite well when I go to stick it down later up on top. So just sort of looking and thinking about what I'm doing and what I, where I'm placing things, I decided um, at this point to trim down that banner so that it doesn't go all the way across and cuts the page in half. It just sort of um, almost gives a shelf or something to hang uh, the photo and all the other bits and pieces on. Right, so now it's time to stick it down. So just starting with the top layer and pushing it down, I'm going to work on the photo mat first. And once the uh, photos are all sort of on there, I will tuck the other bits and pieces underneath. So I made sure I didn't want to do too much of the tape runner on these because I want to be able to tuck the other bits and pieces underneath without, um, without having tape in the way where you go to poke them under. So you can see I added that banner between the layers there. Um, and I'm going to add that cloud because I know that, that need, that's quite big. And, <clears throat> excuse me, it needs to be able to sit underneath um, the photograph. So here we go. So I was just making sure I had that photo over far enough for the orange card to be able to be tucked in and to still read um, what's on there. And the journaling card as well before I stick. Um, yeah. So I've added that cloud on there. And then I had to be careful with this other cloud because it's vellum, I didn't want it to be, um, because it makes it see through. So I had to stick the vellum on the frame. Um, I could have used liquid glass or something like that as well, but the tape runner um, was nice and easy and less mess and less drying time. So now it is time to stick down these embellishments and where I can again, um, just using this tape runner to do that I think this is almost one of my favorite parts adding all these wee embellishmenty pieces and working out places where they fit um, that adds balance or that keeps balance in the layout so I've got most of the um, the bones of the layout or most of it uh, ready to go so now I am going to add some a, a title using Erin's hand stamp set um, I just felt that these papers were quite a fun whimsical bright um, youthful kind of um, collection so I've chosen this font because I think that it matches that uh, and I'm going to just call it purple tractor just to be really unexciting and unoriginal. Um, so sometimes it'd be good to have more than one letter or more than one set of stamps because when you, for example, with purple, you've got two of the P's, you can only do part of the word and then you have to uh, reconfigure and, and do the next, next piece. But you can see that it comes on there quite nicely. And the beauty of the acrylic blocks um, is that you can actually see where you're putting it not like when you used to use rubber stamps and you sort of needed all sorts of tools to make sure you got things in the right place adds a lot of simplicity to it so the rest of that title is just going on there i will clean these stamps off a bit later after putting them all back so I've got purple tractor. So now I've added the journaling and I'm just going to add a bit of a date stamp 
down here now this isn't carried by close to my heart anymore but it's one of my favorite everyday little scrapbooking tools so if they ever do another one I suggest you grab it so I'm going to use this tiny little typeset font I can't remember the name of it as I'm um, just looking at this to talk about it but it's quite a nice wee set in that it's quite little it's quite subtle it's not going to take over but it's just going to add to that little um, band on the journaling card so it's just going to be, say lavender farm again I have to do the words in parts because of the double doubles um, in the letters or in the words the double letters in a word um, yes I'm going to have to get my clarity of speech uh, improved for next week when school returns and I'm back to the classroom So just popping all these letters on there, um, ready to stamp the rest of them. Farm is a great word, there's no double ups in there, so I could just stamp it straight away. So there we've got the lavender farm, and I really like how that um, balances it out with the text on the other side, as well as the title down the bottom. That's sort of that, it's almost a triangle of text, which is another design element it's pulled in there. So I'm having a look at the sticker sheet that came with this collection to see if there's other things or anything else that will fit uh, before adding a few more dimensional embellishments. So just adding a few of these bits in. Um, I could finish there and say that the layout's done. Um, but I just wanted to add, it, it felt to me like it wasn't finished yet. Um, now in this collection these gorgeous acrylic shapes so there's some stars and some tabs and things like that um, and I was super keen to use them just because I love that see-through um, and that acrylic depth that, that they provide so I decided to pull out some of the stars uh, and chose three to place on there. I had a bit of a, um, I was using this, um, the glue last night and I think I must have left the lid off for a little bit too long because even my special top hadn't kept it nice and clear. Um, so I had to soak it in some hot water for a little while while I took my son to do something and then I came back and was able to glue those acrylic shapes on as well as all these sequins. So on that cloud that I backed with that pretty um, blue dotted paper, I decided to add the sequins that also came with this collection that I had. Um, and again, I'm just using that same glue with the micro tip, uh, a wee dot on the paper uh, to add, and then adding the sequin or the stars on top. So I'm just doing a little bit of those and then I will do the rest. You can see here it's kind of got quite a cool sparkly look over there now. Um, and adding a few of the stars because I've added some of the acrylic stars I just thought bringing out those little stars from the sticker sheet would add to that as well so there we have it a bit of a check and happy thanks for watching